Mr. Speaker, I wanted to talk to you about human dignity. Well, human dignity is what precisely motivates our side of the house. Because we care about the human dignity of everybody in the world. We care about the human dignity of our soldiers, certainly. But we also care about the human dignity of those that die in the line of fire because we don't fully understand what it is we're sending our soldiers into. We care about the human dignity of everyone whose lives will be wasted in conflicts that we don't fully understand. And that is exactly the reason that we want the media to report the full horrors of war. But specifically with the case of soldiers, we tell you, Mr. Speaker, that it is certainly unfortunate that their families may have their pain shared publicly. On the other hand, soldiers are agents of the state. They take on special responsibilities and special powers as agents of the state. We give them the right to kill on our behalf. We ask them to do so. We think we thus have a responsibility to know what they're doing. Okay, in this speech I want to talk to you about two things. I want to talk to you about how decisions get made and how this will improve them. And then I want to talk to you about the responsibilities of both the citizens and the media in a democratic society. So, in democra even in democratic countries, decisions of war and peace, when the media refuse to show the full consequences of those decisions, are made by a tiny elite at the top of politicians and generals who are themselves not on the line of fire, who are themselves not in danger, and who themselves see everything through the prism of the tool at hand, that being military force. We think the result of that is that, for example, when Stanley McChrystal says that he wants 40,000 troops publicly, it becomes impossible for President Obama to resist a surge, whether or not that is good for Afghanistan, because such is the prestige of the military, because the public don't fully understand the brutality of war. We think that politicians need to be able to resist that pressure. We think that the publication of the Pentagon Papers and the revelations of the My Lai Massacre were a massive service to America in the case of Vietnam because the generals were wrong and the generals can be wrong and they will continue to be wrong as long as there is no accountability and no check on them because the media is too cowardly to show what they are doing. We think that the politicians need the cover of public outrage where, people, where soldiers are being asked on behalf of the public to commit actions that we would never countenance if we were fully aware of them. We think that is incredibly important, and as Adam told you, that reactions to war, understanding of war, is necessarily visceral. It necessarily comes at a pre-analytic level where we see suffering and we react to it. That's why statistics and even print media won't fully do. We want images and we think the public deserve them. I'll take closing. So, I'm still confused by the contradiction in Adam's speech. Which is it? Some of the public sees the violence in Rwanda and is more likely to go in, or it sees the violence of Saddam Hussein and is less likely to go in? It sees the violence in Rwanda and it sees an outrage on the conscience of the world. It sees the violence in Iraq and it sees an outrage on the conscience of the United States. We think very clearly the public is able to distinguish between just wars, wars of necessity, and wars of choice. That is the distinction. So we think that what we are doing will make just wars more likely and unjust wars less likely. Because we do have empathy with the people of, of Rwanda. We do or, or would have empathy with the people of Darfur if we could see what was being done to them. And we would not ourselves choose to start conflicts in which that kind of thing would be done to innocent people for no real reason. So, this leads on to the second point the responsibility of living in a democratic society. We think, Mr. Speaker, that certainly, in some cases, it is just and even necessary for us to send our troops abroad to fight on our behalf. But we have no right to send our soldiers to fight and kill on our behalf if we are not willing to be aware of what they are doing, if we are not willing to see the costs that they are imposing, both in terms of moral costs, in terms of human costs, on themselves and on the populations where they are fighting. We have no right to do that. We think it's unfair to our troops, it's unfair to the civilians who are being harmed, and it is unfair to our citizens and to our responsibilities as people living in a democratic society. It's also unfair to our process, because it makes our process less able to handle Sorry. war, less able to deal with war, less able to resist the pressure to go to war when people don't understand it. 
But it's also the responsibility of the media to show us these things. Because the role of the media in a democratic society is not to sing us lullabies and tell us everything is okay when it's not. It's to show us the truth and to allow us to make decisions on the basis of that truth. It is not the media's job to say that you cannot handle certain truths, that you are not capable of processing the full horrors of war. We think the concept of democracy necessarily implies that citizens are able to make different, difficult decisions. If that's not the case, then you have no faith in democracy. Sir, which is it? People's reaction to violence is always visceral or it leads into an in-depth discussion of just war theory? <laughs> so, we think the visceral, visceral reaction when we show what's going on in Darfur will necessarily lead us to realize that intervention in there may very well be just. We think on the other hand, no thank you, we got the same POI twice, but we see what's happening in Iraq, we will be less likely to think that that's just war, because the ends of the war are different. In one case, we're preventing atrocities, in the other, we're fomenting them. That's not a very difficult distinction for the public. Finally, what we get from the role of the media from art is the idea that the public somehow will assume that what the media doesn't report on is just so horrific and that they will somehow be able to grasp the horror of war by it being excluded from their view and systematically kept away from the discourse. This is absurd, Mr. Speaker. There's a reason that soldiers and not civilians get post-traumatic stress disorder, and it's that soldiers see the full horror of war. If we want to be able to make these decisions, and we must be able to make these decisions, because war is sometimes just, and war is sometimes necessary, then we need to be able to live with the full costs of that. We need to be able to make those decisions with the full deliberation and the full consciousness of what exactly it is that we are doing. Otherwise, we are moral monsters in Opposing our whims on the rest of the world. Art told you that we are going to be crippling the military by the whims of the public. This is exactly the opposite. We will be crippling the military, we won't be crippling the military. We will be directing the military with a moral goal, with the full heart of war in mind, and that is the only way that we have any right to do so. We are incredibly proud to propose.